So many of you came out and demanded that I review this motherboard. I understand why. The Tomahawk is by far the most sold, the most propagated motherboard of the entire MSI lineup. In short, if the Tomahawk does well, well the entire family of MSI motherboard does well as well. Well, well. And the B560 chipset is its opportunity to propose the very same recipe which made this board such a must-have to a lower price point. Today we are reviewing the excellent Mag B560 Tomahawk Wi-Fi from MSI. The productivity destroyer, the girlfriend repulsor, finally a gaming motherboard which will keep you up at night for all the good reasons. And fun fact for you, did you know that the owl feeds its female before breeding? You learn something new every day on my channel. Now, the MAG is MSI budget gaming motherboard series and the Tomahawk its shining star. And if a component is not about delivering more frames per second, it is a second class citizen period. But this generation is a little bit different because despite being a budget-minded or mid-budget-minded motherboard, the B560 Tomahawk managed to retain most of the premium features which were available on its more expensive Z590 variant. And at about 200 bucks, it goes head-to-head -head against uh, some of the most competitive and well-designed motherboards out there, such as the Tough Gaming B560 or the excellent B560 Hours Pro A. X. Now, starting with the obvious. We are dealing with a six-layered PCB ATX motherboard, exactly what I expected in order to support the PCI 4.0 standard while providing a better VRM heat diffusion and a better audio static isolation. A definite upgrade when compared to its predecessor, the B460 Tomahawk, which featured only four PCB layers. CPU socket-wise, we have an LGA 1200 CPU socket able to support both tenth and eleventh generation of Intel Core CPUs. Note that only the eleventh generation of Intel Core processors come with PCI4 lanes, which has its importance since this is where our motherboard PCI4 abilities will be sourced from. Small reminder, the PCI4.0 standard uh, delivers twice the bandwidth available on the older PCI3.0 standard. So instead of one gigabyte per second per lane, we'll have two gigabyte per second per lane, something which definitely will uh, uh, impact our day-to-day -day productivity and uh, performances. VRM-wise, we have 1560 amps power stages organized in a 12 plus 2 plus 1 phases configuration. This is 720 amps worth of power to juice the most demanding Intel Core processor out there. But since we're dealing with a B560 chipset, meaning that this is a non-overclockable motherboard, you might ask yourself, isn't this a little bit overkill? Well, probably, but keep in mind that even though you cannot overclock your processor, um, you can still push it to, to, the ma to its maximum boost clock, which can be very, very high. For example, I had no issues whatsoever to operate a 10,900K at about 5.1 gigahertz, but it does still require quite a bit of power, hence the beefy VRM. Now, I do need to point out the low and high side power stages configuration. It's definitely a cheaper way to get a more powerful VRM, but it is also less agile and harder than integrated power stages. And to keep all that heat under control, MSI did not change a winning recipe and simply reprised its excellent old metallic cooling stages, which has done so well on both its B550 and Z590 variants. And special mention to the main block, from power stage to Bakayus, there is nothing here but condensed steel. The whole thing topped with this never-ending radiating roof. Additionally, both of our heat shields have a double thermopadded contact design to provide individual heat dissipation for both artichokes and power stages. And despite all this, the result is a mixed one. With an i9 10900K running at about 5.1 GHz, the VRM heatsinks did a splendid job at radiating most of the heat away and both managed to stay below 70 degrees Celsius after 45 minutes of a torturous synthetic load. Unfortunately, it was not the same story with the PCB itself, which went all the way up to 105 degrees Celsius, direct consequence of using that cheaper and harder low and high side configuration. Now, on the face of it, it's not a catastrophic temperature since the the PCB has been graded to go all the way up to 130, 135 degrees Celsius, but it does not 
calm my weariness. It does not, not make me comfortable enough on the long run because it will impact the lifespan of your motherboard when you go anywhere on 100 degrees Celsius. The good news is that even in the most intensive gaming situation, you'll uh, probably never deploy as much heat as I did during this synthetic load. So uh, as, as long as you have a solid airflow in your build, you should be fine. Memory-wise, the Mac B560 Tomahawk supports up to 128GB of DDR4 RAM in a dual-channel configuration, clocking up to an unprecedented 5066MHz. These kind of speeds can only be achieved with a single RAM stick. The more you're going to populate your dual-channel, uh, the lower the speed will go. But the good news is, again, that if you go with 4 RAM stick, you can still hope to achieve 4GHz and above. So definitely impressive, especially coming from a budget-minded gaming motherboard. So uh, a big memory kudos to MSI for this. Staying in the memory, we have three M.2 solid state drive sticks and there is a lot to unpack here. Depending on which processor you couple this board with, performance and configuration will differ. With the 10th generation PCIe 3 Intel Core processors, only two M.2 solid state drive will be enabled, swapping data at a maximum speed of 32 gigabit per second. But couple it with an 11th generation PCIe 4 enabled Intel Core processor and our three sticks will be fully enabled. Only the CPU fed one can operate up to PCIe 4.0 standard, meaning data swaps up to a whooping 64 gigabit per second. In both cases, these sticks will get very hot very quickly. And MSI did well in providing two of these sticks with thick extended thermo padded heat shields, which did an amazing job at keeping them below 40 degrees Celsius during their stress test, far, far away from any potential thermal throttling. Now, chipset wise, we're dealing with a brand new B560 chipset from Intel, which is a massive upgrade when you compare it to its B460 predecessor, since it does support the PCI 4.0 standard. Now, despite not having any PCIe 4.0 lanes itself, it, it can redirect some of the ones available on your 11th generation processor to feed some of the most performance-centric components on the board. In the same time, it allows it to stay at a cool 6 watt of heat signature, avoiding the need of an active cooling solution, as seen on the old PCIe 4.0 X570 chipset. Export-wise, we have three PCIe expansion slots, one bachelor and two 16 slots with different speeds. As usual, only the first 16 slot can deliver up to 16 full PCIe lanes. Therefore, this is where you absolutely have to place your graphic cards for optimal performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. The naked 16 slot has been capped at 4 lanes at PCI 3 standard, which is not exactly suited to serve a video card, but absolutely expected at this price range. Now, just as we've seen with the M.2 solid state drive, depending on which processor you'll be coupling this motherboard with, uh, our PCI expansion will operate with different PCI standards. With the 10th generation core CPU, all of the PCI exports will run at PCI 3.0 standard with 1 gigabyte per second bandwidth per PCI lane. But couple the board with an 11th generation core processor and our first PCI slot, we'll see its bandwidth double to, to 2 gigabyte per second per lane. And I can already hear you sweet innocent voices saying Laurent, Laurent, oh sweet Saint Laurent, but having double the bandwidth doesn't mean having double the performances on my video card. Laurent, tell me. Well, I'll tell you. PCI 3 or PCI 4 standard won't make any difference on the graphic card performances since none on the market today can output enough bandwidth to even bottleneck the PCI 3 standard. So yeah, it's great for marketing or even future proofing, but that is about it, at least for now. Now, let's quickly note the presence of our usual six SATA ports able to swap data up to that slow bottlenecking six gigabit per second, nothing new here. But most importantly, let's move on to our back IO, which does feature a padded integrated backplate, fully expected at this price range. And starting from the left, we have four USB second generation plugs, two display outputs, both of which can handle up to 4K 60 frames per second, if required, four USB third generation with 5 gigabit outputs, a 2.5 gigabit LAN, which is quite a jump and an upgrade uh, when compared to the B460 series, which only featured a 1 gigabit LAN. Next, we have a mighty 20 gigabit Type-C, another B560 chipset upgrade, and a first in the budget world, and something which will definitely add a solid value or a solid added value to your motherboard. Next, we have a dual-band Wi-Fi 6E adapter, which can transmit up to 2.4 gigabit 
megabit per second worth of data on the much cleaner 6 GHz radio spectrum. And finally, our 8-channel ALC897 codec from Realtek, which is definitely a budget-oriented codec, but does a good job at using the 6 PCB layers since both left and right audio channels have been traced on dedicated PCB chips, further suppressing any kind of signal interferences. Overall, the I.O. really represents what a major upgrade the B560 is compared to its B460 predecessor. We have better connectivity, more outputs, and MSI, to be fair, managed to give us a balanced yet luxurious menu of outputs, which at this price range is unprecedented for a big back IO kudos to MSI for this. Front panel wise, nothing new here. We have a couple of second generation USB connectors, great for monitoring, one five gigabit front panel connector, and a 10 gigabit type C front panel connector, which I am very happy to see because it is pure luxury at this price range. Cooling-wise, we have seven PWM fan connectors, one of which can support an all-in-one water cooler. Obviously, this is more than enough and more than you'll ever need uh, to provide your build with a solid airflow. But I do regret the fact that these connectors are not hybrid connectors, which would have given a unique sense of agility and enthusiastness to the board, something that maybe MSI should keep in mind for the next iteration of this board. Troubleshooting wise, we have our usual easy debugger, which will guide us through the main booting stages of our boot and the bare minimum, in my view, for a PCA 4.0 enabled motherboard. But I do regret the absence of a BIOS flash button, which would have allowed us to recover or update our BIOS without a processor. Again, something that MSI should definitely keep in mind for the next time. And talking about BIOS, well, this is where MSI has real issues and weaknesses, and not only on this board. I had reviewed the Z590 Carbon, a much more expensive and premium motherboard, and we had exactly the same problem. The BIOS is too complex, it is buggy, and it freezes all the time. At every single attempt I made to go a little bit deeper into the BIOS, all the characters turn into Chinese and froze instantly. And it is absolutely unforgivable coming from a company such as MSI, who's so dominant on the motherboard board market, especially knowing that this board has been released for more than a month now or two months and we still are dealing with a very buggy bias. So the good news is that um, MSI can decide to fix this on, on any day and with the next release of the bias. So I'm going to cut them a break on this. But yes, MSI, get to work, get to work fast. Finally, MSI being MSI and Tomahawk being Tomahawk, we have more RGB on this and there are holidays in the French administration. Starting with an RGB strip hidden under our chipset heat shield and no less than four RGB connectors, two of which are addressable, the all conveniently placed in pairs at opposite side of the board for an easier access. In short, enough RGB to solve world hunger. Now, in conclusion, at about 200 bucks, the MSI Mac B560 Tomahawk Wi-Fi is a real good attempt to push forward what a B-series board can deliver. Either VRM, memory, or even IO-wise, the B560 Tomahawk manages to deliver about everything its Z590 variant can at 70 bucks cheaper. And in fact, I would argue that maybe the B560 Tomahawk is actually a better value than the Z590 Tomahawk simply because they are going to do exactly the same thing. They're gonna give you exactly the same performance GPU-wise, processor-wise, about, and uh, despite having a harder VRM, they both have the very same buggy bias, so there's really no incentive for you to go on the Z590 route, uh, which by the way I'm going to review next week and I will confirm, when you have such a good B561 in hand. And a special note for the cooling components, which have lost nothing of their premium coming down from the Z590 series. Thermopads are about the best you can hope for, and the motherboard manages to deliver a wealth of feature without losing its focus. In short, the B560 Tomahawk manages to deliver a little bit more than its natural competition uh, at equivalent pricing. It does set a new standard at what kind of performances you can expect at this price point. And overall, if you're looking for a mid-budget rig, a good quality gaming computer with a with solid yet not too expensive components. Well, the B560 Tomahawk is really where your money needs to be. Yes, it is.